And uh, let me go ahead and jump into the presentation. I do want to thank the commissioners for providing some time for this update on your agenda. Let me share my screen just one moment. with this, this project and these programs, but um, let me first start by stating that I-35 Capital Express program is actually made of three standalone projects. That's the North project that goes from SA-45 North to US-290 East, and then we have our South project, which goes from SA-71 Ben White Boulevard uh, to 245 Southeast, and then the in-between portion, which is a simple project, and that's what I'll spend most of my time tonight discussing. Um, we are planning on providing non-toll high-occupancy vehicle lanes through um, the extent of these limits, and the, the HOV lanes or managed lanes will be restricted to carpools, vanpools, transit, and emergency responders. Our central project goes from US-290 East to SH-71. It's about eight miles, and we're constructing two managed lanes in each direction. Again, those are non-toll. Along with that, we'll be reconstructing ramps, bridges, intersections, improving the frontage roads, adding <coughs> bypass lanes, um, and enhancing the bicycle pedestrian paths and accommodating transit routes. Our total construction cost is about $4.9 billion, and we anticipate starting the main primary construction in 2025, but there may be some smaller construction um, activities that, that the, the community will see starting in 2024. And this is where we are right now in the process. Um, we are in the environmental schematic phase, and this summer we held an open house where we showed two alternatives that we were moving forward with, alternatives two and three. We had done an environmental preliminary screening evaluation and had screened out our alternative one. That was the alternative with the multi-level deck section, multi-level tunnel section. Uh, we advised this summer that we were moving forward with alternatives two and three. Um, during that time, we received quite a lot of feedback and we made some modifications to alternative three. I'll go over those in a moment, um, but I will say that we presented those modifications at, at our CAPEX voice meeting that Center Volunteer Opportunity and Community Engagement in late January. We are now moving forward with our technical environmental study, and we anticipate having the recommended alternative that we will present at a public hearing ready um, to, to show everyone the end of this year or very early next year. And then we anticipate environmental clearance by the summer of 2023. And so, you know, I mentioned that we made a lot of changes to our alternative three, and that was in response to um, significant community feedback that we received. Um, we heard, again, um, the desire from the community to go no higher and no wider. Our alternative three had elevation, um, areas of elevation near airport and woodland, and so we, we did make some changes there. Um, again, more east-west, better east-west crossings and better connectivity, more bicycle and pedestrian enhancements, encouraging transit, maintaining the Holly Street connection, providing a more urban feel to downtown, and using text out right away to create areas for development and reducing impacts to homes and businesses. Um, this is some of the public outreach that we held, and I know you all have this presentation, so I, I am going to try to go through these slides pretty quickly so I can pull up some exhibits and, and walk through big pictures, some of the, the new um, changes that we've made since the summer. Um, these are some of the key refinements that were made in our alternatives two and three, and I'll just highlight here, removal of the upper decks, lowering the highway, 
adding the bicycle pedestrian accommodations, those are all elements of our alternatives two and three. And the refinements since the summer um, included reducing the right way footprint uh, by approximately 20 properties, removing the proposed flyovers at 290 East. Um, that was an area where we were proposing some, some direct connectors, flyovers. We found that we were able to provide a non-signalized path to the managed lanes using the existing direct connectors. Um, lowering all of the lanes at Airport Boulevard instead of elevating them new bicycle pedestrian crossings. Um, and then let me also mention the big change was a front of road shift from Caesar Chavez to Dean Keaton Street. That, that basically allows us to provide a more urban boulevard type section. Um, we also have the opportunity to connect from the east side to the west side over to Palm, in the Palm Park, Waterloo Greenway area. Um, so those are some of the major changes that were made. And, and we'll walk through those in more detail. These are the environmental studies that we are moving forward with. The water resources, traffic noise, community impacts, air quality, they're all listed on this slide. And um, we have started those analysis and um, these will be all summarized in our environmental impact statement. And this slide highlights our enhanced east-west connectivity through the corridor. This is both for cars and then also bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, you'll see the green are new bike pad crossings that were modified in our, or that were added in our modified alternative three. And the orange are new bike pad crossings that are in both alternatives two and our modified alternative three. This slide focuses just on new bicycle pedestrian only accommodations. And so you'll see we've got about um, eight additional crossings that our project is proposing. And then uh, I'll quickly go over some of these renderings. It helps, I always feel it helps to have a, a visual picture in your head before we start looking at the engineering drawings. Um, some of you may have seen these before, uh, but this on the left side is 4th Street. We're looking towards the west. And what I really would like to make certain everyone notices through here is that the lanes are lowered. Um, you'll see the managed lanes, main lanes, and frontage roads through this section are all lowered. Um, we are proposing and have had discussions with Capital Metro on, on grazing or elevating, and we call it grade separating the red line. Um, and then next to that, we would, we would construct a, a bicycle pedestrian bridge. And that's an alternative to and our multiple alternative. And then over here, this is Ladybird Lake looking south. Um, this really just is to show that there will be a connection from the Ladybird Lake shared use path down to the, or the I-35 shared use path down to the Ladybird Lake boardwalk system and trail system. Um, how this connection looks will be workshopped with the city and the community, um, but we will be providing those trail connections. And then this is Airport Boulevard. We are looking south, so you'll see downtown here in the distance. And we are proposing in both alternatives now for the managed lanes and the main lanes to go under Airport Boulevard. And so if you look here, you'll see what we have existing today. Um, this, you know, with Airport Boulevard going under the highway. And so this is going to be the difference here. And you'll also see, I want to call your attention to the red line. We have also in discussions with Capital Metro and the city of Austin, we are proposing to elevate red line and the feature gold line. And um, this way it's spanning over all of the lanes, including the front of the lanes. This is, this next rendering is at 32nd Street looking west. And I do want to mention these two renderings, some of these that I'm showing you now, they're very early on. Um, they were developed, say maybe nine months ago, a year ago. And we had we have not yet full, had not yet fully fleshed out all of the details of the bicycle pedestrian accommodations. So I'll talk about that, but they're um, they're not reflected in these renderings. Um, but I do think the renderings are still good to look at because this area, 32nd Street looking west 
is um, you know an area where we have three levels: the lower portion, we have 32nd Street, and then we have the upper decks. And so we will be taking the upper decks down. You'll see a very, um, you know, quite a big difference in the visual aspect going looking from east to west. It really is, I think, going to, you know, make that area. Um, it's really going to enhance that area and provide just a, a better visual experience and pedestrian experience um, through this section. And you'll see Dick St. David's here in the background. This is at uh, Riverside. We're looking towards the northeast through here. And um, we are also proposing a um, single point urban interchange. It's an innovative interchange. and. The reason that this interchange is being proposed at Riverside and also at Airport Boulevard is it allows us to um, maintain a large flow of traffic through these corridors. And you know, Airport and Riverside are major east-west corridors along I-35 and through Austin. It allows us to maintain those intersections uh, with less signal phases. This is especially important at Riverside where we have the Cap Metro is planning the future blue, uh, blue line, which you'll see depicted here. Um, before we had modeled this single point urban interchange, we were finding that the signal timing required to accommodate the blue line operations um, was just not, not possible at this intersection. The, the timing and the intersection was just effectively blowing up with congestion. And so the single point urban interchange is really the best configuration to accommodate all of the traffic, as well as the operations of the blue line. Okay, this is kind of some of the, the ex very exciting changes that we've made since the summer. Um, we're looking here at, uh, this is around 3rd Street, and we're looking towards the east. You'll see we have the um, Whole Foods target area, all of the, the new area with um, restaurants and developments over to the east side. So there's a hostel here and a church. And what we're proposing is um, through this section, uh, we would build a pedestrian bridge from 3rd Street over, but we are actually shifting the front of roads over to the west side. And this is um, starting that boulevard section I was discussing earlier. Um, this is what that same section would look like, and you know, we're standing here at Palm Park, but this is what that same section would look like if the, um, as we work with the city on their caps and stitch enhancements. And I know a lot of people are familiar with that. I'll just um, remind everyone that the, the caps and stitches, caps are considered a cover over the highway. So it would be a park-like cover or deck plaza over the highway, and the stitches would be a, a longer or a wider uh, enhanced bridge. And so here, we've just shown this as a green area. We have a no surface level enhancements to be provided by others. Um, so it would be the, the city's directive to design and fund the surface level enhancements and developing the, the concept for what they would look like working with the community. Um, what we're, one of the exciting things about this is this provides a clear passage um, without crossing without um, crossing any any streets from the east side directly over to Palm Park. We call this and it would be effectively a land bridge. So if the um, deck classes go in through here instead of having that pedestrian bridge um, like we showed here, uh, we would have just this land bridge and I'm sure this this shared use path would, would be, envisioned and you know may meander and there would be some other elements um, on the, the surface and you know i'll point out very different from what we have today uh, looking at the picture in the bottom left hand corner okay this is the eighth street looking south and here you really can see the, the boulevard section um, through here i do want to point out um, through this section you'll see we have these widened bridges. Now these are already part of the project. In the summer, TxDOT developed some new bicycle pedestrian guidelines that allow us a very urbanized pedestrian heavy areas to provide up to 30 feet on either side of the travelway, um, shared use path and buffer area. So that's 60 feet total for the bridge width. 
and through that we also have the opportunity to um, check up make a commitment to work with the city of Austin and the community to provide some aesthetic features. And so these could be sun shades, there is possibly opportunity for murals, for place making, landscaping of course, um, park furniture if, if that is what the community wants. Um, the city would be maintaining these features, but TechSop would fund them under our project. Now, um, this area is proposed for a cap, but I, while we're looking at this east-west crossing, I just want to point out, if the, the stitch would just be an extension of one of these bridges, and so the stitch could provide opportunity for a pop-up park or just an area of respite, um, some sort of uh, recreational section. But in this particular area here, we do have the opportunity for a cap. And so this is what it could look like with, with the, the deck plaza covering. I'm sure the sun shades and the shared use paths would be um, redesigned and the aesthetics would be different um, you know, once with the finished project. But this is just an idea, a visioning of what it could look like, you know, contrast very differently with what we have existing. Okay, I want to um, just pause here for a moment. This is at I-35 looking northeast in the, the Cherrywood neighborhood area. It's right over to the east side. So this is in between um, like 32nd Street to 38th Street in that area. And so I, I'll, I'll show that area on the map in just a moment. But what we want to, to, to make certain everyone knows through here is we have throughout the entire corridor um, agreed to post, design and post the front end growth at 35 miles per hour. And that is significantly lower than what we generally have on our textile highways. But because this is an urbanized intersection and because of all of the feedback we received from the community and our partner agencies, including the city of Austin, um, that, is, is, is what, that is the approach that we're going to take. Um, I do also want to point out we will have a shared use path all along the corridor, um, north and south, on both sides of I-35, as well as on the east-west crossing. Um, I'm, I'm just going to mention I have these slides here in case, in case questions come up, but so I can move on to your questions and, and other and the maps. Um, we do have future corridor technologies, a strategy that we're planning to build the cyber backbone to accommodate future technologies and future proofing the corridor. Um, we are also, we have a program called Live 35, that's our locally influenced visual enhancements. That's the program that we're going to be using to work with community to develop the aesthetics on the east-west crossings at Lady Bird Lake and in some area, other areas along the corridor. Um, we also are starting some outreach to diverse populations now that restrictions are lifting. We're going to be hosting pop-up tents in areas of underserved areas of the community to make certain they're aware of the project and so that we can listen to their feedback. And then we also are going to, going to continue our initiative to address homelessness and that is um, our work and the work that we're coordinating with others to reach the, the um, unhoused population so that we can let them know about construction, about support services, and about the, um, the changes coming to this highway. Okay, and then um, the next steps are, we have another voice meeting coming up in April, April 14th. It is going to focus just on bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. We're gonna continue our environmental studies and design refinements, um, continue our Lib 35 aesthetic meetings, and then hold a pop-up meeting. And now, um, let, me, let me go back. I don't use WebEx very much, so I'm trying to find my screen share. Well, I'll just say while you're changing, and, um, the voice meeting will be on April 12th, which is a Tuesday at Houston Tillotson. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. All right. Okay, so this is our mo our modified alternative three that I was talking about, and um, 
I, I want to show you, this is what we started with. This was our alternative two, and that is still being studied, alternative two, modified alternative three, and the no build, which is the existing condition. But I'll zoom in here real quick to show you the purple is our fronted roads, and those are at surface level. So they're at grade with the adjacent properties. Um, below that are the managed and main lanes that are one level lower. And then we have the blue, which is the shared use path. And then we have some areas along here with green hatching. Those are potential enhanced aesthetic opportunities. And then just to get your bearings, um, up here is Airport Boulevard to the north. And then as we travel south, this is Dean Keaton. We hit the match line, so we scroll over here. Um, this is at Clyde Little Hill Manor, MLK, the downtown area. This is the Tap Metro Red Line at 4th Street and then Holly Street. This isn't the full extent of our central project, but it is the, the downtown core. But one thing to note here, our frontage roads are all on, are, are both on, on either side of the highway, typical of, of what you normally see with our textile highways, even in urban sections. Switching over to the modified Alt 3, this is um, where you see the northbound frontage roads start shifting over to the west side. The green here reflects those areas of, of, of tap opportunities or deck plaza opportunities. And so you'll see this is that area of Palm Park um, where uh, we have the opportunity to provide the car-free passage. Um, I also want to point out there's a bypass lane that goes under Cesar Chavez and surfaces back up. So if you're coming from the northbound frontage road lanes and you don't want to wait at the intersection at Cesar Chavez, you would bypass it, pop back up, and be able to access downtown um, through the northbound frontage road. We continue along the northbound frontage roads, or with the frontage roads on the west side, going up to about 15th Street. That's where the frontage roads shift over to the east side. And what this does is provides a tap opportunity, deck plaza opportunity for the University of Texas. We've had some discussions with them, and they've expressed interest in a tap opportunity in front of the new Moody, the new Moody Arena and then where the new Bell Medical School um, expansion will go. Um, the design and the funding of these TAPs would need to be provided by the University of Texas, just as the design and funding of the TAPs in the other areas would be the um, purview of City of Austin. Um, so I'm moving back over to this match line, heading north. This is at the UT practice fields in the bubble, and then we have Mount Calvary Cemetery over to the the east, and there's a capping opportunity through here. And then north of Dean Keaton is where our frontage roads were thrown back out to go on either side of the road. And through here, we are providing stitch opportunities at 32nd Street, at 38th Street, um, at Wilshire to 41st Street. And this is something I'd like to point out, especially to the commission. Um, in January, we actually showed a pedestrian crossing. Right now, in order to cross over with a, a car or a foot, you would take Wilshire, walk around through, there's a, a mineral rock shop here, and then take a uh, take an underpass over to the Hancock Shopping Center with HEB. Um, we are now proposing to put a one lane in each direction uh, vehicular access and at grade surface level shared use path for pedestrians and cyclists through here. Um, this is something some of the neighborhoods have requested. Other neighborhoods are um, have concerns with it due to cut through traffic. We'll be discussing um, this with all of the neighborhoods in the area. There is the potential that this street could be blocked off with bollards, um, depending on what we hear. But we are going to construct this this vehicular access through this section. Um, you'll see a stitch opportunity to the north of 41st Street and a stitch along the Cat Metro Red Line, and then the opportunity to build a connector between the stitches through here. Um, I also want to point out at Airport Boulevard, we have this hatched green area. This is all an aesthetic area and, and a potential enhanced aesthetic opportunity. You know, we all know what the existing airport intersection looks like. I really believe that there's a huge amount of opportunity to, to make this more of a park-like setting with landscaping, 
with uh, some place making. I, I think it could become a, a, a very nice area um, to use if you're walking and cycling or in a wheelchair uh, versus what we have today. Um, I'll also point out, let me switch back to 32nd Street, we also have another one of these enhanced aesthetic opportunities in between Edgewood and 31st Street. And so this is another area that we'd like to engage with the community we, um, to, to make certain that uh, you know, what gets designed here along the shared use path really reflects their community values and what they want to see. And then um, if the stitch is proposed, if the stitch is constructed through here, that could, could provide a really nice area for our people that are on, on foot or, or bike and not in their cars. So with that, um, I know we only have a few minutes for questions, but I'd like to stop sharing and, and uh, ask if I can address any questions from the commission. Commissioner, do you have any questions? We'll start with uh, Dave. Yeah, um, could you go back to the um, airport boulevard intersection and tell us a little bit more about the um, pedestrian crossings? That my understanding is it's like tunnels and stairs or ramps. And maybe you can help clarify that. Yes, and I, I do thank you for asking that question. We have had a lot of, of, of feedback on and concerns about how pedestrians would maneuver around the single point urban interchange. And that's something that we're working closely with the city right now. Just uh, the week before last, we had a four hour workshop with the city of Austin to discuss the, the, the um, bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. What we're showing here, the, the blue is the shared use path. This is, not, um, this is not what's going to actually be constructed. So we are, this is under design. Um, I will say it looks like we're gonna We've heard that tunnels are not, um, that people are not interested or, you know, they're, they're not wanting to see tunnels in these areas. And so we're trying to find solutions that don't involve tunnels. Um, most of these crossings are actually going to be signalized intersections. So there will be a signal here um, with a pedestrian signal through, through these areas. Um, where there isn't, we're looking at, at smaller raised um, pedestrian bridges. I will mention one of the issues with pedestrian bridges are not issues. One of the requirements is that they all have to be ADA compliant. And that means that they have to, the, the approach to get up to the pedestrian bridge requires longer ramps. And so there's concern because people have to go out of their way to get to the pedestrian bridge. So they're walking or biking or um, you know, further distances. We are going to, on all of our pedestrian bridges, provide staircases um, directly from the shared use path to the pedestrian bridge to provide some shortcuts for those that, that want to use the staircases. So that is one change that um, is not reflected anywhere in these schematics that, that you'll see in future exhibits. We're gonna be discussing this in more detail also during the April voice meeting. Um, we'll have stations where we focus just on Airport Boulevard and Riverside, the shared use path. And so I would really encourage you all if you're interested or know of people that are interested to um, attend that meeting. But um, we, we know we have a lot of work to do in this area at these intersections and, um, and we are doing that work. I, I will say what, uh, what we are going to propose will absolutely be better than what we have there today. Um, I, I have used it several times um, and it's, it's, you know, we all know there are major issues with it, but it, um, we, we do want this to be the best uh, configuration for the future and, and that's what we'll be working with you all on. Thank you, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'll just say, I'm, I'll say I'm deeply concerned. <laughs> I want to make sure that, this, that we do this one right and I'm concerned that tunnels or, or things that, that, you know, bridges that you have to walk over and climb up and feel like they're not gonna get used and people will just default to scurrying. And so we wanna avoid scurrying that can be dangerous. <coughs> so these areas here within this area, as I said, these will be signalized intersections where you push the button. The right turn areas, we're looking at traffic volumes, but these areas where we have the right turn, so these three legs, 
Um, those are areas where we may need to have an elevated section because of the traffic volumes going through. Um, over in this corner here, our plan would be to route traffic to 45th Street and have them use this safer intersection through here. But this is all still under under design and we are taking into it on this. So I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Yes, Thor. Yep. Thank, thank you for this. This is very uh, helpful. Could you just for clarity's sake enumerate the vehicular crossing of I 35 between DT and airport? Exactly where are they? Sure. Okay, um, so we're at airport here. We're going to have a vehicular crossing at Wilshire Boulevard to 41st Street. It'll be one lane in each direction. Um, and then we have one at 38th and a half Street. That's already existing. That'll remain, of course. Um, we will have a uh, three, oh, it, 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 it stops at the northbound frontage road as it does today at 32nd Street. We have the St. David Dover in this area and then DDT. So new here, we're not removing any vehicular crossing. Um, right now, there is that under crossing going to Hancock, but we're proposing to replace it with wheelchair. Yes, uh, Ken. Susan, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, thanks for coming out to our neighborhood on Sunday as well. Could you go back to the airport location? I wanted to Something I didn't ask, I wanted to try to get a little bit better understanding on the uh, ramp coming off of I-35 uh, going, I guess you would be going south onto Airport Boulevard uh, towards Miller and the Delwichy neighborhood. If I'm, Are you talking no, about? No, I'm going that direction is wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. It's um, the oh, okay, the ramp on I-35 mm -hmm. on the airport. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so if you are on the main lane, if you're on the main lane, you would come up through here and there's a ramp just south of 38th Street. You then would have a bypass, so you wouldn't have to stop at 38th Street. You would continue, you would have a by, it continues under Wilshire, so you would not be stopping. You would continue on and then you would exit right here, uh, just before Crestwood. And make that maneuver. And and can you is that a one lane exit that'll or is it gonna handle two cars or what's the volume? It's a one lane. It's a one lane through here. And is that a grade or is that going to be elevated like it is today? So it is it is lower. It's lower. It starts raising, it starts elevating. A little bit so it's, it'll be more at surface level when we reach here um, but it's it's still going to be below this wheelchair um, 41st street crossing and so by the time it gets up to this section it will be at ground level and surface level okay thank you i appreciate that sure yes christopher yeah susan thanks for joining us today this has been incredibly helpful um, yeah, I, I have one just comment to consider this this relatively adorable in context, but um, to thinking about these streets that are north of the set the, the the cross the stitches that are north of the central business district, <clears throat> one <laughs> advantage that the, the the higher the you know the, the kind of floating lanes um, accommodate right now are are incredible in a shade. Um, and so, it, like, granted, you know, acoustically, they're 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 awful for the neighborhoods. But I think just one adjustment to make would be looking at a similar shade device, shade structure that we're doing down in the central business district connections, up on the the Mainer and the 32nd and the 41st, 38th, uh, in, in air, um, up at airport as well. Thank you. Yeah. But that's a great comment. So you're, I, I think you're talking about the shade structures on um, on the east-west crossings, and, and absolutely, we have that opportunity here on the east-west bridges 
Um, we have the 30 feet, this is 30 feet of buffer. You'll see the shared use path, but this, so we're working with the city because the shared use path will probably be in the middle of this buffer section. So we have a buffer on both sides between the bridge rail and the street, but um, we'll have, have room for the shade structures. And then of course, if it's a stitch, there will be a lot more room to develop other elements. And then um, all where this green patching is also, which is a good extent of the, the section over on the east side, we do have the room to have some additional landscaping. And so um, shade structures, potentially, you know, possibly trees, especially in this area where we have more room. Um, yes, we are going to be looking at that. Thank you. And I think um, just something to look to as well, if we can get a seven foot planting zone between those um, parallel shared use pathways from the back of the curve to the shared use pathway that run parallel to the, the drive lanes, uh, that would allow us uh, what would be, you know, a nice shade tree. And I think our, our, our standards in Austin are really aiming to do that at 30 feet on center, um, which puts out a critical amount of shade pretty quickly, will also function as a nice conscious, subconscious barrier between the vehicles and the shared use pathway. And we have major Western solar exposure on that side. Uh, so. You know, this is going to be a, 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 a tough microclimate um, on a, a, a cyclist and a pedestrian, and I think those uh, relatively minor adjustments uh, will, will make, you know, a, a robust difference in that human experience. So the placement of the trees is something that, that we would work with the city on. They'll be maintaining um, any trees that, that you know, if they're going to be installed. I will say our current guidance that, that we need to follow um, at 35 miles per hour with the first section requires a four foot clear zone from um, the, the front of her. So we're not able to put anything within that four feet. Um, and we do have concerns with, with placing trees you know, so close to the roadway with root growth or debris. Uh, branches falling and maintenance issues of that nature, but um, you know we, we will be working on this with the city and, and their maintenance um, staff as to what what they can what they can um, feel that they may, can maintain along with following our the the, by, the, um, the Texas Roadway Design Manual. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, for city streets at a similar speed, I believe we place trees four feet from the face of curb um, is a standard for ours on a, on a 25 to 35 mile per hour road. So um, if there's anything we can offer in terms of the engineering to kind of protect the infrastructure and also share guidelines, um, our city of Austin Urban Design Group should be able to accommodate that. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Commissioners, other questions? Oh, uh, yes, I'm uh, Mark. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I'm curious about the, uh, what do you call the managed lanes? The, the, it would be the four in the, in the middle, two going each direction, one south. Uh, are those gonna be at the same level as the rest of the, the roads? Are they elevated? How does, how does that work? So they are going to be lower, and let me, I'm going to pull up, go back to some of the renderings, because I think that should be So you'll see they're, they, they are lower too. Yeah. Um, and throughout the, the extent of the corridor. So, so you'll see that they're, they're, yeah, they're what we call a level below, negative one level. Um, yeah, here's another good picture. And so the frontage roads are at surface level. So initially, um, our alternative three had the managed lanes going over Airport Boulevard, and um, that 
is something that after our, our summer meeting, the research was, was not, um, you know, not something, you know, that the community wanted to see. And so that's where we made the change. But the, the, the managed lanes are main lower throughout the extent of the project right now. It's a follow up question. Is, so is it six lanes that are going in each direction? No, it's it's um, so the managed lanes are two lanes in each direction, so four lanes total for the managed lanes, and then we have main lanes, and the main lanes are highway lanes, but they don't have the restrictions of the carpools and the transit van pools and emergency departments. So anyone can use the main lanes. Um, those vary between uh, three to to four. Uh, main lanes in each direction. Um, in addition, we also have, you know, transitions. And so where we have the frontage road ramps going in and out, providing that, that egress exits, um, we will have auxiliary lanes. And so that provides an area where the cars can merge into and out of the main lanes. And then in some areas, we will have bypass lanes. Bypass lanes are those lanes that, that I showed where they allow you to get off of the main lanes onto the front road system, but then bypass intersections. And that really helps keep the front end roads and the intersections less congested. Um, helps keep the, um, you know, just all of that congestion along the front end roads and cars waiting and idling, that helps keep that to a minimum. And it lets everyone get to where they're going faster, more efficiently. So uh, that means that uh, there's going to be widening of the of the highway as it as it exists right now in that area. That is correct. There is widening of the highway, and let me um, go back to that now. That's really the ten million dollar question. Yeah. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I really I've got about twenty screenshots going, and it's a little different with WebEx. I haven't used WebEx in a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we are we are widening, and um, the, the what I'll show you here is this orange dashed line. I hope you all can see it. I know you have a pretty big screen here. So this orange dashed line is our existing right way, and um, so this is the, the existing highway is within this area, and so we we are widening. Um, and then the blue is the proposed right-of-way. So in order to accommodate the, the four managed lanes in most areas, we are having to widen. What's important to note is that the capacity that we're adding is capacity that is encouraging multimodal use and getting away from the single occupancy vehicle. And so it's encouraging the use of transit, van pools, carpools. And then the other major elements that we're adding with the program, the shared use paths, the east-west crossing, those are encouraging um, people to walk and cycle. Um, and also the east-west crossings as well. So we really are trying to provide more multimodal trans transportation solutions with this project. So one other follow-up question, please. Uh, so that means that the widening is going to occur on the west side? Um, so in some areas, it varies throughout the corridor. So in this area, it is occurring on the west side. Um, years ago, before the project, just before the project got funded, it was actually going to, the widening was going to occur on the east side. Uh, what we learned about the Abali development, which is an affordable housing development, and so we were able to shift. Um, and so in this area, North Air Airport, it's, it's on the, the west side. Uh, let me show this. Fifty first Street roundabout. And then we can move more up here. Okay. So this is Capitol Plaza in Cameron Village area. 
um, through here, there's a, some widening on both sides to this area. Um, I will mention we are we are proposing a pedestrian by crossing that 51st Street. I think all of us that live in this area know that there are there have been a lot of um, pedestrian fatalities um, of, of people trying to cross from one side to the other. And so we are putting out a pedestrian crossing through here. Um, but you'll see it's, it, it goes on, on both sides through this area. Um, after the red line, it, it, there's a little bit over on the west side. On the west, west side through here, and then through here, um, both sides, and then this is where we get into the Cherrywood area where then it switches mostly over to the east side. Now, I do want to, I'll just mention, there's been a lot of discussion questions about this area and the impacts, and you'll see the right way like this to here. Um, actually, let me pull this map up, you can see it a little bit better. Um, we aren't impacting any, any, any residences. So there are no right-of-way acquisitions being proposed for homes. Um, these are full parcel lots of the businesses that, that front I-35 and the, the right-of-way, proposed right-of-way line goes to the back of the, the residences, the, the residential lots through here. Um, this is all uh, commercial through this area. This, the plot has an L shape through here. Um, but through this area, there are no residential impacts um, of, of right-of-way acquisition, but it would go to the back of the homes, to the back of the lot line. So also, uh, with, with, with saying that, do you have any idea how much it's gonna to cost to buy all those business spaces? So, you know, we, we have very rough budgeting numbers, but but no, we, we do not have a right way acquisition cost at this time. We are so this is you know we still have two alternatives, um, and we're moving forward with all of the evaluation studies. Right away impacts is part of that, um, but we uh, you know at this point we're still early on. We are um, you know as we move further in the process, and once we have a recommended alternative, then we will start doing. Um, you know, we'll start refining the design and the cost estimates, um, and then we'll we'll start reaching out to once we have environment as we get closer to environmental clearance. You know, we will start um, all of the properties will be appraised, and, and those costs will come in more detail. Yes, Corky. Susan, um, I'm wondering about what kind of uh, plans there are to move through traffic. Um, in our Austin, and you can perhaps I join you or some of the other exterior roads to put that through traffic somewhere else. What, what are the plans for that? So this is a, a interstate, um, you know, a, a U.S. interstate, and so we do have have to maintain traffic during construction um, all along the corridor. And so we will be keeping three lanes of traffic open in each direction um, during all of our construction activities. Now we all know that three lanes of traffic in each direction isn't going to get us far. <laughs> we're, we're all gonna be sitting in traffic a while. And so I do wanna mention our north and south projects that I talked about earlier. Um, those are going to start construction this year and we anticipate having the bulk of, of construction started at the right about when we're starting the major construction activities for Central. And so that's going to allow some relief or some detour opportunities for, uh, for people driving to um, at, take US 290 to 183, also take 183 South, the, the newly opened Bertram Expressway going out to SH 130 and then on the west side, an alternative route to get to Mopac and to get to 360. Um, on the south side with our south project, you'll be able to get to SH 71 and um, US 290 West. 
So there will be some detours for people that are continuing through Austin. Those, those of us that, that live in Central Austin, I live in Central Austin, um, you know, those of us around this area, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be fun for, for quite a while while these improvements are happening. And if that's mean that our city grid is going to continue to become more congested during construction, you know, we know right now there's already a lot of, um, there's already a lot of latent demand that's already flowed into our city grid. And so that's going to continue during construction. But um, you know, once this, this project is finished, although it's not going to solve all of the traffic problems in Austin, I think we're going to see traffic move more efficiently. And we are providing a more reliable route to those, uh, you know, to buses and people willing to carpool or able to carpool and, and to samples. And then the, the bypass lanes, um, those will really help reduce congestion at intersections make operations uh, flow better. Um, where the ramps are placed are going to help with weaving and, and merging um, operations. We all know those those lower deck and in the lower deck the, the ramps, um, you know, those ramps really need to you know to to be taken taken out and updated to today's standards. Um, so it will be a safer corridor. And then all of the bicycle pedestrian accommodations. Um, just quickly, um, will the managed lanes related to Uber or Lyft uh, qualify to use those lanes? If there's more than one person in the car, absolutely. Okay. So it's it's two cups. Gotcha. So yeah, um, by oh, the the driver by himself wouldn't, but um, certainly with a passenger. Okay. And then the other thing, and just can you just sort of generally answer this and not go into specifics? So the managed lane uh, versus the through or the regular lane, whatever you call them, um, the differences in the where they are allowed to enter and exit, is, is there a significant difference in those? There is. Um, there is a significant difference. There are more access points to the main lanes than the managed lanes. And the, the managed lanes are, are pretty restricted as to where you can access them. There is an area near MLK. There's an area near Riverside. There's an area just north of airport. Um, it, it is restricted uh, because it is it is meant to service those long drivers going the longer distances. Um, the main lanes we do provide more access to the predators, um, but but yes, the, the managed lanes are more restricted. I will say in the the airport area um, and 38th Street area, it's, it's this is one of the best places for access to the managed lanes. So uh, we have that managed lane access to the north of 51st Street. So we have some very good access to here. And then also um, here at uh, just the, uh, just in between 38th Street and 32nd Street, access to the managed lanes. So, um, you know, those of you coming from, you know, the central area, although you might have to go north and take a U-turn to get onto the managed lanes or vice versa, if you're going to Dallas, if you're going to San Antonio, San Marcos, um, you're going to be able to get on the managed lanes very quickly. Um, and, and I think have a lot of, uh, save a lot of time doing that. Okay, thank you very much. That makes a lot of sense to me. I appreciate that. Commissioners, any other questions? Yes, Norm. Thank you. One last question. Uh, how many years is this going to take to complete? Mm, that is the billion dollar question. Um, so we're, we're saying about seven years. And um, there will be some pre construction activities happening um, relocation of utilities, getting some structural elements uh, in shape to take on additional traffic during traffic phasing. Um, and that may occur before the seven years start. So you know, we're saying seven years um, as our official estimate, but um, you know that that definitely is subject to change. And you know it also depends on at this point we don't know what we're building yet. So we do have um, three alternatives out there: <coughs> two, three, and the no build. So um, you know each alternative will have different. Um, 
time frame. And um, the other thing is we are also looking at material supply issues and the tremendous development uh, with other agencies, Cap Metro, of course, and the Project Connect, which you'll hear from uh, after me, City of Austin's bond program and projects, and then all of the other developments featured on May throughout the region. So uh, there's going to be a lot going on, and of course that impacts phasing and, and supplies and resources, but, but seven years from now. I also uh, noticed on your list of, of uh, items that uh, y'all are looking at, one of them is climate change. What specifically does that mean? So we look at the impacts of air pollution and greenhouse gases and emissions. Um, that is something done on a, generally done by Texas at the programmatic level, so statewide. But we will be looking at that specifically for this project because that, that was something that was requested by stakeholders. As for the scope of that and the details, that's something that um, you know, we, we're planning on having a voice meeting to, to spend more time on the, um, the details of the study and how our, um, what we're using for our approach and assumptions and then some of the preliminary findings. So um, that's something that we, we, you know, we will have the opportunity to go over more detail later, but um, we will be looking at emissions and, and pollution um, generated as an impact of this project and how it impacts the adjacent communities. Susan, uh, just one last uh, question. I don't know if it qualifies as a technical question. I think when you were describing the airport and Riverside intersection, did you use the term single point interchange? Is that the, did I get that term right? Uh, oh, yeah, it's so single point urban interchange and transportation engineers we finally, finally call it SUIs, um, but single point urban interchange. Can you kind of just describe a little in layman's terms what that is for some of us that aren't that, yeah. that aren't familiar? So, um, and there are there are pros and cons to this type of interchange. One of the big interchanges, or, or one of the big benefits, is it really helps prioritize the east-west flow of traffic. And again, you know, east-west crossings and connectivity is a major. Um, the major goals to improve on along I-35 and in all of Austin, you know, our east-west crossings, we uh, we don't do east and west as well as north and south do Austin. And so the single point urban interchanges change takes out that north to south movement on the frontage roads. And you'll see there's no through movement through here on frontage roads. By doing that, it reduces the signal phases that we need and it reduces the movement um, it's also, there is also some safety um, implications as well because crashes are more, um, are not as, are not head on and they, they tend to be more um, side crashes through here. But um, one, so what you'll see is, you know, right now, if you're going south on the front of you just continue south on the front of you stop at the airport intersection line and you continue on. That's existing. Well, that's not going to be possible now. Now, if you're going south and you want to continue south on the frontage roads but not get into the main lane, what you would need to do is you would, you would get off here and take this bypass. So it allows you to bypass airport, which is good because then you're not stopping at an intersection. Not as good if you're coming out like at 46th Street. You know, or, or this, you know, these driveways because you, you won't be able to continue. So if that happens, you would go over to 45th Street and then you'd have to take airport to continue south. Um, we always look for, are there other ways to access to get, you know, to, to, to go around? And so that's generally, um, you know, those, are, those are some of the trade-offs that we have to make. Um, same thing, if you're going north, um, you know, through here. So say you're coming from Crestwood. You would not be able to come out to the front of road and just continue north. There's, there's, no, there's no road to take you there because of this intersection. Um, if you come down, you know, if you're coming further, you can get on this bypass. 
and you can take the bypass under intersection and, or under the intersection. So, um, you know, if you're coming on Crestwood and you need to go north, really you would want to come out to here to airport and, and come back this way. But the the movements you'll see it it allows cars that are are going southbound on the Frederick Road to be able to to, to turn. And then we go east through here. You can make the movement to go west through here, but you don't have that north-south movement. So you're taking out a, a phase of your signal timing. Thank putting you. them in the bypass. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for the, the clarification and the explanation. And I want to thank you and, and Francis for, for uh, your presentation. You really kind of shed some light on this critical project. And uh, we appreciate you. Uh, you guys uh, coming back to kind of give us this uh, updated information. We appreciate this opportunity, and uh, I know you guys always have a busy agenda. A good time if you wanted us to come back would be um, probably very early next year, and we should have a recommended alternative then, and we can go over that with you. Um, so I'd say early 2023. All right, it'll be good enough. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And Matthew, do we have anybody signed up to provide testimony on this? Thank you.